Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We continue our ongoing study on course 104, spiritual gifts, what they are and how they operate. And today we're in lesson 9, the other spiritual gifts, part 2. Brothers and sisters, we said it on and on. The true kingdom church was not better to be a theater-like organization where only the leaders are anointed, they are, the, they are solution providers, and the brethren are mere spectators or a dormant laity who come into the building to consume the anointing on the leaders. That's not the New Testament church. This is the religious church. This is the fruit of Rome, 1700 years of error. On the other hand, the true church is a body, a living, loving organism of different body parts who are all anointed to release and receive their peculiar spiritual gifts and graces as Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 says. Brothers and sisters, bear that in mind as we go into the study today. By the grace of the Lord, the Lord is going to keep showing us some of the other gifts. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I am who I am. We thank you for the opportunity to study under your feet, Lord. Open the heavens. Let your word be clear. Feed us unto we want no more. In Yeshua's name, amen. If you look at Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 7, I mean 4 to 6, it tells us, we have many members in one body. All members have not the same office. So we be many are one body in Yeshua. And everyone members one of another. Everyone members one of another. Having then gifts. Differing according to the grace that is given to us. Then he began to mention the gifts. 1 Corinthians 12. The same principle from verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts. But the same spirit. There are differences of administrations. But the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations. It's the same God which worketh all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to it all. A spiritual gift is a manifestation of the Spirit. What does it mean? Whenever Holy Spirit shows up through somebody, that's what a spiritual gift is all about. In Ephesians 4, says verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yeshua. Every one of us. And this is the great scandal of the modern church, where leaders don't tell saints you have something to offer. It's not just about money you bring, but there are certain things the Lord endowed in you for the body. And you can't preach that if you want to run a theater paradigm that exalts a man of God only as the only anointed one. Others are consumers of the anointing, brothers and sisters, to be alive. And to say you're a living church, therefore, it is a situation where everybody embraces and uses their spiritual gift as a primary means of serving others. First Peter 4.10 As everyone has received the gift, everyone, so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim giveth, that Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yeshua HaMashiach, to whom be praise and glory and dominion forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it's so important for us to understand these things. We need to emphasize them until people understand and begin to practice them. And that's why in this course, we share the reality that there are four broad ranges of spiritual gifts. Number one, at the root gifts or basic service gifts which are imparted at the point of regeneration. This is not about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The day you are born again and Holy Spirit seals you into Yeshua, there are seven gifts that you could have one or two or three given to you. Romans 12, 4 to 8 discusses that. Then number two is the enabling or power gifts which are received when a saint is filled with the Holy Spirit to give it the cutting edge capacity to drive the vision of the Lord and to fulfill the purpose for which we were created. The power derived from what Yeshua said in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. 
is now manifested in any of the nine spiritual gifts in in First Corinthians chapter twelve, you know, from verse eight to ten. Then the third broad range is the what we call the other spiritual gifts. In other words, they are combo. You don't have a particular description for them. There is a basket of them, and these are various gifts mentioned either directly or implied through description of what they entail. And in the previous lesson, we looked at some of them. Okay? We looked at from verse number uh, uh, 17 to number 23. Okay, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. We looked at seven. Today, we're going to look at the other spiritual gifts. And if we have time, we may go into the fivefold. Otherwise, the next lesson, we'll look at the fivefold. So, brothers, let's now continue. Number 24, the dreaming of dreams. Dreams are one of the ways Elohim communicates with his people. In all generations, Holy Spirit lays hold of some people and reveals present or future events to them while they are asleep. In the Old Testament, there were a few notable dreamers. Joseph was one of them. Even from a young age, he saw a dream of his father, mother, and his siblings bowing to him, something that was to happen much later when he was prime minister of Egypt. And he also had the gift of, you know, okay, we'll come to that. We'll come to that, the other one, the interpretation one. Okay, so dreaming of dreams is in itself a gift in Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29, where the outpouring of spirit was first you know, pronounced in a major way and confirmed when Peter was speaking. Dreaming of dreams is going to be one of the things that we look forward to in the Omega Church. Men and brethren, Joel 2, 28, that it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Listen to this. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaids in those days, will I pour out my, my, my spirit. So, brothers and sisters, dreaming of dreams is a spiritual gift. And we need to also take note and beware. The recording has started. We need to take note and beware. Not all dreams are messages from Elohim. Not all dreams are messages from Elohim. Why do we say so? There are satanic dreams. Dream, what are they? These are projections from Satan and his agents designed to either confuse or intimidate the saints. Or some are projections from Satan which when you naively accept them and confess them, it gives Satan the legal authority to now smite you. And that is why when you are talking about dreams, please be careful. You can use a third party term, not yourself, not to say me. Because if you say yourself, you are simply giving Satan the right to do what he had planned, when he, if it's a projection from him. They are also what we call soulish dreams. These are dreams which emanate from the subconscious realm of the human soul. And when they are asleep, then from the subconscious, it begins to come up in vivid uh, terms. These are functions of either the worst fears of the saint or his or her deepest desires that are taking root in the subconscious realm and come to the fore when one is asleep. So, we need to take note. It's not everything you dream is from Elohim. And that's why we need to be careful. Satan, satanic dreams tend to bring fear, worry, anxiety, suggestion of failure or destruction. And we need to take note as individuals, faith and fear are two magnetic forces of equal strength. What you have strong faith for inevitably draw, draw down, gets drawn down to you. On the other hand, what you fear most also gets drawn to you, except the Lord intervenes and out of his mercy spares you. Job was a typical example. Wonderful man. But Job had this terrible fear that came upon him. That his children will get into trouble, they'll be destroyed. So every day when they go out, maybe to attend an event or party or whatever, he will slay some animals or sacrifice, and it was fear that was driving that. How do we know? Job himself said in Job 3:25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come upon me. 
So if you fear something enough and it gets into you, it can come up in dreams and you might think it's true. Man, it's very important. Therefore, we say, you know, do not be quick to voice your dreams as if they were gospel truth. Do not boast either that your dreams always come to pass. Do not use your own lips to condemn yourself to premature death or failure. Dreams which constantly convey a message contrary to the purpose of Elohim for you, you should be rejected and silenced through the blood of the Lamb and excess of spiritual discipline on your part. You should know the plan of the Lord for your life. You don't take everything hook, line, and sinker. There's some Christians that are so open. Anything doctor tells them, they take it. Anything they dream, they take it. Who told you? The doctor is a human being. With all his training, with all the expertise, he's still a human being. He didn't create you. She didn't create you. So you must learn to push back spiritually and at times physically. You must learn to. Listen, I remember it was 2003 or 2004. Yeah, I think 2004 when a doctor told me that it was over. Life over. And the enemy basically I couldn't travel. That's what the doctor said. I couldn't travel. I won't make it. And the enemy was suggesting that it was over. And seemed to point to that, that, that in the bloodline. People didn't make it to this and all that. But then, I'd known what the Lord said he was going to do with this vessel across the world. And knowing that, I said to the enemy, by the grace of the Lord, you cannot kill me. You cannot take what the Lord gave, because there's a purpose to this life. That purpose has not been fulfilled, and you're wasting your time. And the doctor said, I couldn't travel. I said, doctor, you know what? I'm going to travel. When I get home, I'll be with my family. I'll be okay. I'm going to be with my wife and children. And do you know, brothers and sisters, I made a trip. It looked like hell broke loose. Even on the aircraft, as I was landing, before we landed in Lagos, on the way from it, was heavy, and if an old friend, you know, from primary school, was a doctor, was sitting in the same room with me. I got down. We got down to the aircraft. They took an ambulance. They wheeled me to a, 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 a health facility in the airport. And what my wife had gotten information was that the husband may not make it. And I was there the first day. They said that too. And by the way, they were worried. And I asked and lost my phone. I called my wife and said, you know what? I'm here. I'm alive. And I'm going to come back tomorrow to be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us form the habit of pushing back. Whether in dream, whether in life. Don't take hook, line, and sinker. Anything. Unless you not know your destiny. Unless the Lord has not given you an idea what he wants to do with you. So learn to push back. By faith, rise up, resist the enemy, and every evil word spoken. He'll flee from you as James 4 7 and 1 Peter 5 7 to 10 tells us. And as 1 John chapter 4 1 to 3 exhausts, we need to try every spirit, including our dreams, to be somebody else from Elohim or not. Dreams from Satan always have this thing that want to subdue you, men and brethren. Let's take note. Not all dreams are from Elohim. That's why we've got to be careful about dreams. And for that reason, number 25, there's a gift of interpretation of dreams. Yeshua has no delight in confusing his saints, and that is why he gave to some species a special ability to interpret what anybody dreamt that is assigned to them. As the name suggests, this is the ability to put in clearly understood language or explain in detail the mind of Elohim expressing dreams. And if it's not of Elohim, the person can design it also. Like the gift of interpretation of tongues, this gift is given to bring clarity. So when dreams are properly interpreted, the meaning is immediately clear, and there is great edification on the part of the person who received the dream. Madam Brennan, if it is a warning, if people who have the privilege of knowing the mind of Elohim can, inter can repent and turn to him, if it's an impending judgment, whose time is matured, the interpretation will enable the righteous to flee the wrath to come. Brothers and sisters, Joseph had great capacity for interpreting dreams. And this is what brought him to great promotion 
And one of the, you know, the great thing brought promotion in the court of Pharaoh, one of Daniel. Daniel had great capacity for interpretation of tongues. And the interpretation he gave to the dream of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2 is still speaking till today. And listen to this. The coming of the Lord, the stone that was caught from the mountain with our hands was prophesied there. And the particular place the stone came, the feet of iron mixed with Mary clay, describes the empire that has been imagined in the earth realm and that is going to be divided by strong and powerful. But that is also manifesting right now for those who have eyes to see, they will see where it is pointing. So, number 26, visions. A vision is a vivid portrayal of a present or future event. Elohim uses visions during history to communicate with his people at the war. Ezekiel saw several visions. The most well-known one to date is the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. That prophesied that Israel would be a nation again and will rise again and will never be plucked out. And you know what? It has stood the test of time. Visions are communicated in the spirit. The Holy Spirit in effect shows vivid images to the spirit of the vessel chosen. The Lord may make it clear or may allow messages to be blood until the appointed time of manifestation. Then I'm reading Acts 10, 1 to 48. We see the way Elohim used visions to minister to Cornelius and Peter alike for bringing to pass his counsel concerning the Gentiles. The book of Revelation, all the 22 chapters, is essentially a vision Yeshua communicated to his church through John the Beloved. Number 27 is trance. Trance is like vision. But the only difference is that while visions are often given when the faculties are awake and then one begins to see vivid images, a trance often, the individual seems to be transported to another realm of consciousness, has reduced awareness of people and things around, and then one sees things. Brothers and sisters, it is important to know that only few people, I mean, the few people have it, they see it clearly and it works just as they see. But take note, like all revelatory gifts, whether you're talking about prophecy, dreams, interpretation of dreams, talking about visions and trance, they depend substantially on the state of heart or mind of the vessel. What do we mean? Titus 1 16 to Titus 1 15 16 tells us something. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto the defiled and unbelieving is not impure, but even their heart and mind is called, and consciences are defiled. If a heart is pure, the Lord will find it a suitable channel to communicate his truth. A defiled heart and mind will also attract satanic or soulish messages. For instance, if you have had a bad heart, mindset towards somebody, and you are trying to tell the person uh, what the Lord said and all that, that person is safe to spiritually release the blood because the motive may not be pure. So it's very important to know. But you, know, you can use vessels to convey negative messages. That's why I say if you are revelatory gifts, keep your heart pure always. Keep your mind pure you're always. Don't let anything culture in the heart that is contrary. Men and brethren, number 28 is martyrdom. Martyrdom, this is a grace to be, to, to live for the Lord and be willing to lay down life where need be for the sake of the Lord and the gospel. Martyrdom is not something anybody can grab. It's only few people. Few people. Yeshua talked about if you want to follow him, take up your cross. You will die to self, take up your cross and follow him. And Paul said, I was, I'm crucified with Yeshua, nevertheless I live. Galatians 2.20 But to die for the faith is something that takes a level of grace and a gifting and ability and capacity like mm -hmm. Stephen, a deacon. In Acts chapter 7, verse 55, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, saw 
the glory of Elohim and Yeshua stand on right hand of the Father. And he said, I saw, behold, I see the heavens open. The Son of Man standing on the right hand of Elohim. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. They stopped their ears, ran unto him with one accord, cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon Elohim, and saying, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Men and brethren, those who have the gift of martyrdom, death means nothing to them. Because life is one continuum. Once you are born again, you are an eternal spirit, soul, and body. So they are not scared by death because of whatever. I mean, what of Paul? Paul's martyrdom, he was beheaded. Because as a Roman, they could not crucify him. So what happened? A man who was about to be beheaded, look at what he wrote to 2 Timothy 4, 6. For I'm now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord, the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love is appearing. What of Peter? Peter was about to be crucified upside down. And look at what he wrote in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Yea, I think it meet. As long as I'm in this tabernacle, he called his body a tabernacle because the spirit, his spirit man was inside the body. As long as I'm in this tabernacle, as long as I'm still alive, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. That's the way he could describe the martyrdom that was about to happen, even as the Lord Yeshua has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my, de my disease, to have these things always in remembrance. Men and brethren, it's so important to know that these things describe spiritual gifts. Look at how many we've discussed so far. Look at so far, we've discussed 28. And in the next lesson, we discuss the fivefold. When you add 28 and add 5, you see 33. And yet there may be some other gifts in the Bible that we have, have not been revealed to this verse, or may be revealed to you. So let's stop being spiritually lazy. How many gifts of the Holy Spirit? There are nine. No, there are many. The body has many members. You are a member of the body. What is your what are your gifts? You know, what are your gifts? And these ones mentioned here, by way of assignment, which ones represent you, which ones are new. And what did you learn? What new thing did you learn? Number two, what new thing did you learn from this lesson? Brothers and sisters, let's open up our hearts. This lesson will fire you up. When you add it to discover a ministry, discover, pursue, and fulfill. And if you're a woman, add it to women in ministry, or your youth add it to the four pillars, the five pillars, you know. You know what? The Lord this year has been giving us ministry-related courses because he knows this is something important. Many believers are wasting their time, wasting Elohim's time, and they're just in churches where they're like flotsam and jetsam. They are like statistics. We are 3,000 members, meaning you are just a, an object of statistics and it's only the man of God who is anointed and we are just consumers of the anointing. Listen, you want to play that religious game, that's your business, but I want to say to you, if you are a remnant of Elohim, don't play that religious business. Discover your gift. Use your gift to serve the body and receive from other people that is the plan of the Most High. That is what he wants to see. That is what he's doing in the now. The Omega Church is rising and will be known by this simple principle of releasing and receiving from gifts. Otherwise, you know, his people will be trapped in the pew and they'll be like cattle. They'll be traded, used to make money, bring money, buy this oil, Man of God buys oil for one dollar in a dollar shop. And then he's selling it in the church for $35. You know what? That's satanic profit, profiteering. 
as Babylon with Raj. The Bible says freely you receive, freely give. If you're a leader, your duty is to empower the saints to know who they are. Not to look up to Elohim, not you. Brothers and sisters, it's time to do what the Bible says. Yeshua says, if I be lifted up, I draw all men to myself. But we're going to pray now. So please share the video. Let brethren know. Let brethren be challenged to walk in their gift and calling. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am. There's no one besides you. The word that have you, you've released, Lord, let it not depart from your people, but let it ring in our ears until every one of us gets on with our identity, our assignment, that your name will be glorified. Thank you for answering our prayer. We seal this prayer with the blood of the Lamb in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen.